Next are Pahadi schools. Uh, they have flourished in the Himalayan foot hills. So it is. They have also added a great, uh, we can say, heritage to the Indian culture. So in Pahadi also there are other, other again uh, various sub schools are there like Kangra Kangra school etc. We will also try to see them. Good evening, students. Welcome back to Plutus Science. Right. Today is our seventy-first uh, day. Right. So we are discussing the art and culture topics, and today we are going we are going to discuss about the Indian painting. Yesterday we have discussed about the different schools of art: Mathura School, Gandhara School, and Amravati School. Apart from that, uh, we have also seen some uh, two distinct uh, class um, I mean schools. Uh, especially in the medieval period that is pala school and chola school right so on similar lines we are also today also we are going to see different uh, schools of art uh, sorry in in terms of painting we are going to study so these are uh, here also you will see various schools of art uh, related to painting so broadly major paintings and um, uh, the paintings you will See are popular paintings that are popular in India or Indian subcontinent from the ancient period to uh, medieval time. Or Mughal paintings. Mughal period is very well known for the development uh, in the painting, especially a peculiar type of painting has developed here that is known as miniature style. So I mean, in fact, the miniature style has been started uh, before uh, uh, Mughals itself. The Palas have actually. Started the miniature school. However, uh, by the time of Mughals, uh, we can say it has been perfected uh, by the time of Mughals. So the pers I mean the miniature school of painting or miniature paintings have been adapted from Persian legacy. So we have adapted the miniature painting from uh, Persian from Persia. So when uh, we have studied when we were studying the Mughal dynasty that. Humayun had to go to the Persia because he was, uh, uh, I mean, displaced by Sher Shah Suri. So when uh, Humayun was coming back, he brought some famous painters along with them. So once Humayun uh, again established his, uh, restarted his uh, rule, so they he put those famous painters to work. So in that way, Persian elements have come to India, and after that, some uh, great Indian painters also you will see. So with the blend of the Persian and the Indian traditions, a great variety of uh, paintings have developed, both portrait paintings and miniature painting. So you, we will see the difference, what is meant by portrait painting and what is meant by uh, this thing, a miniature painting uh, in this lecture itself in the later part. So apart from that, Rajput painting also you will see. So there are many Rajput kingdoms uh, during the medieval period. They have also patronized the painting, right? We will see what are the kingdoms that have patronized the painting and uh, different kind of uh, features. What are uh, the characteristic features of Rajput painting that also we will see. So apart from that, miniature uh, painting uh, that I mentioned. So Mughal painting apart from poor portrait painting we will also see miniature painting during the Mughal uh, period so apart from that you will also see many uh, folk paintings best examples are madhubani painting uh, <coughs> etc many other folk paintings are there so because of the paucity of time i am not going to i am not covering the folk art in this lecture from your side you try to study about the folk painting especially the famous ones like madhubani painting etc right so these are the some famous schools first we will understand from the prehistoric time since prehistoric time uh, about the painting so when we were discussing the pre prehistoric time in the history lectures there we have seen some hints of painting by the stone age people right so especially the mesolithic age we will find the rock art rock art 
right rock art we have seen so people have drawn rock art all right so rock art that is i mean that we have seen here also we will see so that is the earliest earlier or most earlier painting that we will see uh, that is drawn by the people so uh, whatever the pre i mean first we have to study about the broadly we can divide the painting into two categories one is mural paintings and the other one is miniature painting right so mural paintings are they are painted on a uh, they are mural paintings are painted on a stable or permanent base uh, whether it can be a hall whether it can be a wall whether it can be ceiling even it can be a floor also in the prehistoric times or in the age, medieval ages or for that matter in ancient ages people were painting on the caves walls of the caves uh, same thing happened in the ajinta and ellora caves apart from that there are other caves caves also like uh, like patadakal caves and bhag caves there the cave walls have been used for paintings so whenever a painting is made on the permanent a uh, base that is known as mural painting so basically here paintings will be very large we can call them as portrait paintings so they will be life size life size the portraits will be life size i mean a single person or a group of people will be represented depicted in lifestyle size those paintings are known as uh, mural paintings right in mural paintings there are many uh, many techniques of painting the famous technique or popular technique and that is adapted in indian subcontinent for that matter everywhere across the world adapted by the people earlier people is that is fresco so fresco painting in fresco paintings what happens uh, first a platform will be created on the wall or we can say the object where the paint painting is going to be done a platform will be created a wet platform will be created with the with some material a fresh wet platform will be uh, created and on that platform colors will be used so whether it can be naturally acquired colors mostly the na natural pigments have been acquired uh, from the people from the leaves from the rice husk from etc from the uh, earth so from uh, all everywhere colors have been taken and the paintings will be done with these pigments or colors so because the platform is uh, wet so all the colors used will be absorbed uh, with uh, into that one that platform and a chemical bond will be formed between these colors and the wet platform and after that time it will go dry that platform will go dry so because of the treason the colors will be attached to the platform permanently so this is the technology used in fresco painting so because of the, uh, the use of this technology only right so we have uh, seen using people using the rice husk platform made by rice rice husk rice husk uh, as the first layer after that the calcium carbonate that has been used uh, that has been mixed with water and uh, the second la layer has been formed after that the colors have been used and uh, this colors went into a uh, chemical reaction with the calcium carbonate wet calcium carbonate and uh, that uh, because of that reason still thousands of years back paintings are also still uh, we can see in the ajanta caves because of some reasons including the human intervention the paintings in the ellora caves uh, have been uh, disappeared or damaged for that matter but ajanta paintings are uh, because uh, some period uh, in the time they have went into oblivion and uh, they were away from the human contact only uh, again during the british period only those caves have been uh, rediscovered so the paintings are present there apart from that some other case uh, caves like bhag caves etc also you will find the mural paintings so the prehistoric cave paintings they can also be classified under the mural paintings until the medieval period right so the other kind of paintings are the miniature paintings miniature paintings are majorly made in the on the palm leaves or the papers paper like or any other material so we will uh, you will see small images narration will be there so 
the special characteristic feature of the uh, mural uh, miniature painting is uh, narrative so many uh, i mean miniature paintings have been created during the mughal time or for that matter uh, rajputs in rajput schools and pala schools where stories have been narrated through painting so especially during the mughal period the i mean the stories like ramayana uh, epics mahabharata and uh, many jataka tales from if you, if you take buddhism so jataka tales have been narrated through the miniature painting so miniature painting is uh, the objects will be depicted in a small size the uh, the i mean the platform will also be a small and uh, every detail will be given attention in that so that is the uh, speciality of the miniature painting so there are some technical aspects also there about the miniature painting but i am not going into those aspects technical aspects but remember that uh, in a portrait painting there will be life style life uh, we can say real life representation of the portrait will be there or life size representation of the paintings uh, will be there in the uh, life style representation will be there in the um, portrait paintings however objects uh, objects will be represented in a small size in the miniature paintings right so this is a brief uh, we can say explanation about the difference between the mural paintings and the miniature paintings so by the age of medieval medi by the time of uh, by medieval time we have adapted i mean we can see the miniature painting in indian subcontinent and uh, parallelly the mural paintings were also going on uh, on the caves etc and uh, the during the mughal mughal time we will both we will see both uh, portrait painting and miniature painting by that time the mural paintings on the caves etc that has been declined almost right so uh, before going into the uh, actual i mean major schools we will see the briefly see about the prehistoric art so you will see uh, the art from the 10000 bc onwards the purpose of the uh, paintings if we interpret them it is majorly for religious purposes if you see the images paintings you will understand so there you will see some kind of worship places and where the paintings of primitive gods have been drawn hunting will be seen hunting scenes will be there many i mean group a group of people will be hunting an animal storytelling will be there so uh, paintings will be telling a story so basically these paintings are there in the line forms so the colors whatever used they have been extra extracted from naturally or closely available materials only like leaves etc right etc so some paintings have been made only for the purpose of making painting no other oblivious object is there so for uh, sake of practicing art some paintings have been done best example is bimbetka canes so previously also we have studied about this one it is a, world, a unesco world heritage site right so if you see the paintings see how beautifully thousands of thousands of years back they have painted so one more thing is they are still surviving so the colors are that much prominent apart from that some other places are also there like uh, rock shelters of pachmadi and uh, arneshwar caves these are situated in maharashtra near pune so here you will find the paintings of over 15000 years back paintings you will find remember these place these are names of the places may be asked in the examination bimbetka caves rock shelters of pachmadi it is in madhya pradesh and arneshwar caves near pune maharashtra so in these places we will find the find the prehistoric rock paintings next is ancient period mural paintings you will find them or we will find them between 2nd century bc to 10th century ad so location primarily found in natural caves and rock cut chambers also you will find purpose is mostly for religious purposes all right so depicting stories from all the three major religions hinduism jainism buddhism style uh, i have told fresco style has been adapted right so apart from that you will also find vibrant colors narrative sequences also you will see and the depiction of human activities is there examples are these are all the examples ajanta caves it, uh, they are there in maharashtra you will know, you know very well in ahmednagar district 
Ellora caves. So here Ellora caves never went into oblivion. So because Ellora caves are located near to the trade route, so they were always access to human beings. So because of that reason, here paintings have been damaged. However, Ajanta caves for major part of the history uh, after ancient time they have they have went into oblivion and uh, they were not access people not know I mean they were not known to people only during the British era again they have been found out so then the paintings have been discovered and they have been dated and it is found out that they belong to ancient period next is Sitanavasal caves they are in uh, Tamil Nadu Amravat uh, sorry Arma, Armamalai caves, they are also there in Tamil Nadu and Bag caves, they are in Madhya Pradesh. So all in all these places, you will find beautiful paintings even now also. Right. So briefly, we will see about the uh, all the caves briefly, some information. So here one uh, important uh, painting you can see. In this painting, you will see the dying princess. Right. So this uh, depicts the princess from the Jataka tale who is sacrificing her, herself to see, save a dove, right. So this is the painting of dying princess. So best example, you know very well, uh, not only for sculpture, not only for temple building and also in the painting, Ajanta caves, you will find only one theme that is Buddhism. That is Buddhism. In uh, Ellora caves, you will find all the three religions, Hinduism, Buddhism and Jainism. So there is a similarity. Uh, also here uh, that is with the Mathura school of art and Gandhara school of art. Gandhara you will see only Buddhism as theme. With the Mathura school of art you will see all the three dominant religions in the past. So best examples uh, in the Ajanta caves are dying princess. Next is Padmapani. Padmapani means the uh, god who is holding Padma or lotus in his hand. So it is also a very beautiful painting. You have seen it multiple times on various textbooks in your uh, school times. So this is this painting is Padma Pani. Next is Elephant Procession. So this is a beautiful painting. This is also you can find in the Ajanta cave. Right. So this painting it depicts an uh, procession of the elements which is believed to be part of the Jataka tale. Right. So uh, in this way, I mean, I have told Ajanta caves have, they have went into oblivion and by 1819, again, they have been re rediscovered by name, name also you remember, uh, John Griffiths, he has rediscovered the Ajanta caves. So this is about the Ajanta caves. Ellora paintings, they are not that clear because they were always access to uh, the people because they have located just beside the trade route. So, because of that reason, they have been damaged. However, if you see the features of uh, Ellora paintings, themes uh, you will see majorly from three dominant religions, Hinduism, Buddhism and Jainism. Style here is also what uh, the style used is fresco. And uh, bright colors are used and uh, uh, always the colors have been extracted from natural sources only. Right. So, uh, originally quite colorful. But as with Ajanta, the colors have faded over time. Right. So pigment used were orchre, orches, sorry, orche, reds, greens, blues, and blacks. So these kind of, kind of pigments have been used. Next, uh, Sittanavasal caves. So these are uh, there in Tamil Nadu. All right, Pudukottai district of Tamil Nadu. So they can be dated back to seventh, uh, seventh, seventh to ninth century AD. Right. So these caves are uh, these paintings are considered as the finest examples in the early medieval art. So what makes the Sittanavasal paintings distinct? So major theme is Jain influence. So majorly you will see the paintings related to Jainism. Right. Next are frescoes. So here frescoes are used, uh, created with the uh, vegetable and. Uh, Min, uh, mineral dyes on a thin layer of lime plaster so calcium carbonate oxide so lime wet lime platform is created and that the uh, paintings are made paintings have been made with natural colors right subjects so paintings depict a variety of themes related to jain philosophy and ideology 
common scenes if you see they include peaceful landscapes jain tirthankaras uh, flora and fauna and apsarasas uh, celestial maidens these are all the themes all right so style if you see uh, there are some similar uh, similar uh, similarities with ajanta and ellora caves but there are some distinctions also so use of greens browns and orch rays it creates a scene uh, sense of naturalism in the sitanavasal caves right next important caves are bag caves they are located in the madhya pradesh dhar district of madhya pradesh they can be dated back to dated back between 4th and 6th century ad right so they are uh, very much known for mural paintings uh, distinct from other prominent cave paintings in india so bag caves one of the important painting you can see right a uh, theme is right uh the uh unlike the primary paintings at ajanta and ellora here the uh, theme is uh they have depicted a wide wide range of subjects so they have included jataka tales scenes from the life of buddha secular themes are also there in the uh bag paintings right if you see the style vibrant colors have been used Dy- dynamic figures have been uh, depicted narrative flow is there so they are narrating some story the paintings are narrating some story right so k4 examples are k4 that is depicting rang mahal so this particular cave is considered to have the best preserved paintings showcasing a variety of themes and styles uh, that are discussed above right so this is about the uh, mural painting right now we will see the miniature painting so miniature painting the characteristic features i have explained so there will be attention uh, to detail will be there so small objects will be depicted in a small uh, size and uh, majorly the platform is a page or palm leaf right so in that in miniature paintings if we see the schools so majorly pala school is there uh, right so this painting is about pala school so this flourished uh, in eastern india uh, Uh, time period is 750 to 1200 uh, 750 to 1200 ad so when it comes to palas they also known for their peculiar uh, sculpture we have yesterday we have studied apart from the uh, rock cut sculptures they have also, they have also made some bronze idols right so that yesterday we have studied apart from that you will also see western indian tradition uh which uh, which is majorly having jain influence on the paintings mughal school so you know very well uh, i mean it reached its peak zenith uh, the miniature painting in india reached its peak or zenith during the mughal period especially uh, during the period of jahangir jahangir and shah jahan especially jahangir he himself was a great painter right so shah jahan time also Shah Jahan during Jahangir Shah Jahan time it reached its peak, right? Next is Dakkan miniatures also you will see majorly they have been patronized by the Dakkan Bahmani kingdom Dakkan kingdoms like Bahmani kingdoms like Ahmednagar, Berar, etc. There are five major kingdoms Golconda. So these art has been patronized there. So here you can see the example of Dakkani miniature. Next Rajput schools are there. so it is flourished in western and central india so here you can see the painting there how the nature has been depicted along with the dance of a dancer right next are pahadi schools uh, they have flourished in the himalayan foot hills so it is they have also added a great uh, we can say heritage to the indian culture so in pahadi also there are other, other again uh, various sub schools are there like kangra kangra school etc we will also try to see them right so broadly if you see the miniature paintings the themes are religious themes are there secular themes are there so this uh, painting is secular only uh, materials used are palm leaf paper and cloth these were used as uh, these were used for painting the uh used as painting surfaces right so uh, 
if you see the context first we will study about the pala school briefly if we, if we survey the pala school of art so context if you see it is the earliest buddhist art uh, miniatures have been created here also uh, before uh, the flourish the flourish in the mughal period miniatures have been started in the pala school itself so here you can see uh, the narration or uh, depiction uh, depiction through miniature painting on the palm leaves right so also you will see the vajrayana style of buddhism or vajrayana vajrayana school buddhism on these paintings naturalism and the symbolism have been depicted in the miniature paintings right you will also find the flowing lines and the subdued tones will be there in the paintings right subjects and the themes if you see buddhist deities have been depicted jataka tales and avadanas they have been the major themes uh, mandala depictions also you will see right so these mandala uh, depictions are these are complex diagrams used in vajrayana buddhist meditation practices right so uh, mughal period if you see about the mughal uh, <coughs> mughal period uh, mughal period miniature painting so it is a fusion of influences from uh, mughal mughals persian inspiration is there european elements have also been incorporated because by, uh, by that time europeans have come to india so some elements of european elements have also been taken characteristics if you see uh, it is i mean miniature marvels have been created at that time are uh, a riot of colors so increasing use of colors uh, we can see at that time right so also we will see meticulous uh, brush strokes life like portrayals has also have also been produced so this is known as portrait painting uh, naturalistic settings also you will see so if you see the subjects what are the subjects in the mughal paintings portraits will be there so this is the portrait painting of a beautiful uh, women and apart from that you will also see the portraits of the uh, mughal emperors themselves like Cha, shah jahan portrait of shah jahan portrait of Afga, aurangzeb jahangir so you will see all the portraits right historical events have also been depicted so here you can see the historical events sorry uh, these are the hunting scenes hunting scenes have also been depicted religious themes were there so you will see the uh, epics like mahabharata etc they have been narrated through the mughal uh, sorry miniature paintings nature's beauty also you will see especially jahangir he has patronized the depiction of nature through the painting right so here you will see the flora a deer uh, that is being painted in the miniature painting right so famous some of the famous examples here are uh, first example is jahangir holding a wine cup so this is jahangir's painting one of the uh, some of the masterpieces next is akbar hunting with the with a cheetah that is another masterpiece next is hamza nama so this is an illustrated manuscript commissioned by emperor akbar depicting the adventures of amir hamza a legendary hero from persian literature so that is hamza nama so here you can see the hamza nama painting right so apart from that that is about the mughals and if you see the deccani uh, deccani miniatures uh, styles if you see bold and expressive the painting style is bold and expressive uh, deccani palette you will see specialities of deccani styles you will see uh, deccan skew physiognomy so you will see the physical features that are depicted in the uh, images that will also reflect the deccani uh, deccani area physique in the portraits right so they were this painting uh, has thrived under the sultanates the sultanates the khan sultanates are bijapur golconda ahmednagar bidar and berar also is there so these are the five bahmani kingdoms i mean under them uh, the dakani art has thrived so themes if you see uh, paintings depicted a wide, wide range of th themes reflecting the cultural and dakani miniature uh, styles right so themes are also various uh, many other themes have many themes have been taken taken 
including depicting nature uh, depicting uh, religious themes and also the secular themes are also there right so these are the themes so this is about the dakani miniatures and if you see the rajput schools of pitti so they have thrived between 16th and 19th centuries so the some of the uh, rajput kingdoms where the uh, art has been thrived are mewar malwa or we can say we can call them as sub schools also mewar sub school malwa sub school etc so here you can see a beautiful painting of malwa school All right so bundi and kota so here you will see the beautiful images of that school kishangarh sub school is also there it is also there in present day uh, rajasthan here you will see the uh, single female figures like radha krishna in idealized idealized landscapes you will see All right so this is one kishangarh rajput painting general characteristics of rajput paintings if you see vivid colors have been used expressive figures uh, mythological tales are also there from hinduism ramayana and mahabharata along with krishna's life also depicted court uh, country life has also been depicted country life means the uh, uh, rural area love stories have, uh, of uh, especially the theme is romantic themes like radha krishna uh, these also have been depicted especially in the schools like kishangarh school right natural settings have been used uh, as the background right so this is about the rajput style of painting right next is the pahadi school painting so it is flourished from 17th to 19th 19th century ad so this art has flourished uh, in the or at the foot hills of the himalayas right so the locations if we see uh, it encompasses the present day himachal pradesh uttarakhand jammu and kashmir so there are sub schools like uh, the bashol basholi sub school it flourished between 17th and 18th century it is considered as the earliest pahadi school known for its bold outlines by vibrant colors and a narrative focus right so these paintings have often depicted scenes from hindu epics like ramayana and mahabharata so here you can see the uh, bahloli school of painting next is kangda school of uh, painting it flourished between 18th and 19th century ad right so they are uh, the paintings are celebrated for their delicate brushwork idealized figures soft colors and the focus on krishna's life krishna's life stories and the radha krishna love themes next is chamba school it is flourished between 7th and 19th century known for its monumental style right and bold colors and dramatic compositions so this is the example of uh, champa sub school so it also depicted hindu deities and mythological narratives apart from that you will also see guler school it is also flourished between 17th and 19th centuries right so it served as a bridge between the basholi school and the kangda school right so these paintings uh, show a gradual shift towards the more delicate and lyrical qualities associated with the kangda school right so this is about the various uh, sub schools in pahadi painting so remember the names of the schools you may get a question on the various types of sub schools in the pahadi style general characteristic features if you see for all the entire pahadi schools delicate brushwork you will see idealized figures i mean uh the painters have tried to bring uh real time images uh hindu themes are there they are more prominent including ramayana mahabharata and the life events in krishna along with the romantic themes associated with krishna love stories have been depicted landscapes natural landscapes have been uh taken as the background in the images right so this is about the uh, pahadi school of painting right so uh, uh, right we will uh, see some previous questions quickly first question it is asked in 2018 question is the well known painting banithane belongs to which of the school so you should be knowing the fam famous paintings from each and every 
sub school also so it belongs to kishangarh school which is uh, one of the sub schools of rajput paintings rajput paintings right next question is asked in 2017 the painting of bodhi sattva padma pani is one of the most famous and oft illustrated paintings at uh, ajanta cave so we have seen padma pani uh, a uh, the, the god holding the padma lotus flower that uh, painting is known as padma pani right that is there in ajanta cave right so this is about the paintings uh, i hope you have gained some knowledge uh, from this class thank you thank you for joining the lecture uh, see you next time until then have a good day. Thank you.